All right, so I'm going to call to order um, uh, this work session for uh, May 12, 2021. Um, Mr. Crow, uh, we appreciate your patience today as our meeting went very long. Um, what do you have for us, please? Yes, we are looking to change our dental service provider through ADH, um, Advanced Correctional Healthcare. Currently, we're using a dental delivery service, and we are wanting to transition to Mid-America Health. <clears throat> and the reason for this is um, dental delivery services has about a 10-week spacing in between appointments here at the jail. And we are seeing that that's just too long with the number of inmates that we have and then the issues that we have with those inmates. Um, the last service we had here was on March 7th. Uh, and at that time, the dentist that came in spent seven, seven hours in the facility and he didn't get through the entire list. Um, so looking at the Mid-America Health, they have a much more open schedule. Uh, we can schedule once a month, twice a month, once every six weeks, whatever we need. Uh, but it's just more convenient for us. Um, when we look at pricing, MedAmerica charges $2,200 per day. Uh, dental delivery services had an hourly fee. Um, it equals, it, it just about equals out. Um, and I think the, the, the main thing to look at with that number is since the dentist came in in March, we've had to send, I think, three people um, to outside dentists. Uh, so we've had that cost associated, which would bump up that that cost that we see with the uh, with the contracts. And the other thing we have to consider when we take people outside of the jail is risk of escape, risk of contraband, and risk of injury. So everything that we can do inside the jail, um, it's just better off for everyone involved. And I think with the lengthy wait, you know, 10 weeks plus at some times, um, we're not providing the type of care that we need to provide the inmates that we have here. Um, so we're just asking that you look at the memorandum of understanding, um, hopefully sign that so we can get this new dentist uh, specialist coming in and start treating the inmates that we have here at the jail. Thank you, um, Mr. Crow. Um, uh, comments, questions, uh, Commissioner Jones? Yeah, I'm just so pleased that we're doing this in our jail. I think a lot of people don't realize how important dental health is to your overall health. And I, I believe that you said that many of the people you see in the jail have never seen been to a dentist in their life. And this is just, it's an amazing service um, for these people. And I'm just very pleased to support it. Thank you. Commissioner Gibbons. You're muted, Penny. Sorry, my question was just about the cost. It's listed at $2,200 per day. Uh, you said it probably would be basically a wash in terms of the, the overall cost. So how often would you think that uh, the portable dental services would be coming in? Would it be monthly, weekly? I, I think that could vary um, based on the number of people that we have, uh, the seriousness of what's involved with the procedures. But I would like to hope at least once a month, um, you know, once every four weeks, once every five weeks, something in that, in that vicinity. And I think that when we transition, if we're able to transition with your approval, um, that we will probably have two visits within a month just to get caught up. Um, I think we have a waiting list of about 26 people right now that need to see the dentist. So I'm not sure that we can get all of that taken care of in one visit to start. Um, but then after we get caught up, I think we should be able to do, you know, once every four to five weeks. And again, depending on severity of the issue. Well, I think too that if you can pull somebody in 
when it's needed, it certainly would reduce needing to take people outside the jail, which I'm sure um, also has its costs. Yes. And <laughs> then, um, since we're speaking about costs, this falls under that cap um, that's associated with advanced correctional health care. So there's no, I'm not going to say there's no additional cost, but that's in part of the money that we've already got budgeted um, with our contract with advanced correctional health care. So there won't be any new money having to be to put out for the dental services. It's already in that, that cap fund associated with ACH. Thank you. So uh, a couple of quick questions for you, uh, Commander Pro. Uh, first, can the other contract be canceled without penalty? Yes. Okay. Uh, second question is, has an attorney reviewed this contract? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So I can, uh, I can maybe answer that a little better. Uh, I, uh, Lee and I both have looked at it. Uh, we think there are a couple additions that need to be made, things like E-Verify. I mean, there is insurance language in there, so that's great. Um, so I, I don't think it needs to be, there's not any real substantive changes that I think need to be made, just a few additions. Right, and then we have, they have to agree to our policy um, um, on personnel and things like that, right? I mean, so um, the other concern I have is that this is dated February, 2021 to January, 2022. So um, obviously that would need to be changed as part of that contract, right, Mr. Cockrell? Yes. Assuming they haven't been providing services, Sam, have they? No, they have not. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you think we could have this ready for our agenda next week? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, let me let me rephrase that. Sam, are they pretty good at getting back to people? <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> it w there's no, there won't be any real delay on, on our end. Okay. No, that's, I guess that's all we can do. We can only do what we can do. Um, so does that work for you, uh, Commander Crow? It sounds like we, we've got all our questions addressed, but we just need to get the contract just cleared up and cleaned up for, for Monroe County government purposes. Does that work for you to, to hear this next week, if we can? Yeah, it's wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging around and waiting and, uh, and for explaining this to us and uh, for looking into this. I think this is a real benefit and a real positive step forward. So thank right. you so much for that. Yeah, excellent. All right, uh, last but not least, we have Ms. Gregory from the auditor's office to talk about the final installment of CARES social service and business funding. This is the final, this is the last batch of requests and it is um, from the end of April and uh, Ms. Gregory, kudos to you as well for your patience today. You get a gold star for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I know you're probably doing a hundred other things while you're waiting, but we appreciate your patience. Uh, so tell us about this. Well, um, good afternoon now, everybody. Uh, <laughs> happy to wait though. This is very important. So um, this actually is not the last time you'll be um, seeing me with regard to CARES. Unfortunately, um, we are still wrapping that up. Dee has, um, I believe she said about 10 that she's still working on. And then there's some in the pipeline that, um, you know, we received a little too late to put on this work session. So um, you were going to see me a couple more times. Um, anyhow, today I um, would like to discuss St. Thomas um, Lutheran Church, Tommy D's, Faith Lutheran, Elaine's Cleaning Service, Need More Coffee, um, the Convention and Bu Visitors Bureau, um, Little Zagreb, Monroe County Public Library, Litwin Enterprises, Farm and Motels of Bloomington LLC. So those are um, the claims on the agenda today. Um, the only, um, all are pretty straightforward. All are, um, you know, um, requesting reimbursement for eligible items. Um, you know, every, all documentation was provided um, with the exception of um, Motels of Bloomington LLC. That's the one I would like to discuss a little bit in, in a little bit more detail if that's okay. Um, Mattel's of Bloomington LLC is actually um, home to suites here in Bloomington. Um, it's part of um, 
the um, Hilton hotel chain. Um, it's corporate. Um, it's corporate head headquarters out of Indy, I believe. Um, I did confirm that with legal and checked in with the secretary of state on that as well. So, um, you know, everything is in order for them, but they did um, forward uh, many ineligible items and it, their packet is massive. So it's just, we're going to need to go through that in more detail. Um, they were requesting reimbursement for items, you know, such as deodorant or um, shower drill and, you know, toilet paper, just items that we normally wouldn't approve as a COVID expense. So um, just wanted your thoughts on that before I look into it in a little bit more detail. Great. Um, uh, so do you think we should just wait and put this on our agenda in two weeks? Yes. And, and maybe if there are some more that are ready, we can talk about them at the work session next week and then just do one. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think um, I'll have, you know, everything that was received to data at least can put on the work session for um, next week. I know um, Dee is still working and she returns on the 17th. So there might, if you want to push it off two weeks, we might have everything. Otherwise, I'm happy to come back next week. and. Yeah, that might make sense. So we could do, let me look at my calendar. So we could do, let's see what my colleagues think about this. Uh, it's later than usual, but it works. And um, um, so we would hear it at the, uh, the remaining items and then the questions that we come up with today. Uh, we would hear those. Um, on May 26 at the work session, and then we would put it on the regular item agenda for June 2nd. Yes. How does that, that sounds work? good? How does that work for my colleagues? Is that good? Yes. Great. And then, you know, at, at that point, also, we'll have um, a better idea of the total requested amount for the last remaining um, claims. And I think I think it would be better kind of to discuss all at once in my opinion. So I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then whatever you have, you can always send us um, on email first as you did this time. Um, and let's see if we have um, comments or questions from um, Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I believe that the home to or whatever it's called <laughs> um, is are they where the hotel for the homeless are being hosted? Do you happen not, to know that? Not to my knowledge, no. Um, Julie, are, is that correct? Yeah, no, I don't think so. And that's actually supported by a different grant anyway. That's coming out of uh, different grant funds. I, you no, know, I just wondered if it was because of homeless being um, being there that some of these items were actually needed because they were being used by people who weren't actually paying for them. Although yeah, it's not clear that that would even be COVID related. Well, that's a, a great question, but no, not to my knowledge. Okay. All right, that's the only question I have. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Giffins, comments, questions? Um, mine, mine's a bit unusual. Um, have we given CARES uh, reimbursements to other churches so far? Oh, let me, I have the list pulled up here. I don't believe so, but let me just double check quickly. Um, I'm scanning. We have not, um, from what I see here in my quick scan, um, nothing rings a bell either. Um, we have, a, of course, given to other nonprofits. Right. So. Yeah. Right. I, I think I think the question I have is is in looking at some of the paperwork. It looks like uh, for one of them, and I can't remember which one. I don't have it open right now. But uh, for one of them, there was something about childcare and that kind of thing. I think my question back to both of the uh, religious organizations is whether or not they are providing childcare for the public um, rather than being just like, oh, it's just for our members on Sundays, you know, which are two very different things, or if they're providing food or shelter for people in need outside of, of their membership. Um, that would be my question for them. If, if you could, well, we could have 
we could have D forward that, or if you could forward it, either one is fine. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think there's any hurry on that since we're going to be waiting. So, sure. um, you know, maybe I'll just, I'll just send D that email. How about that? Cause you've got enough yeah. to do. Uh, I'll send yeah. you an email about that. And then I'll also talk about um, the questions that were raised about the hotel and um, what else, anything else for my colleagues, other items you have questions about? No, and with regard to home two suites, um, you know, some of the items, I mean, they may, it, it just might be a misunderstanding. Maybe they are um, somehow COVID related. So more information is just needed. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes, that makes sense. So, uh, and if any of my, my colleagues come up with other questions based on what um, Ms. Gregory's already sent on email with the detail list of each item, um, I would just say send, send me an email and, and she can address this all on May 26th. Yes. How does that sound for everybody? Good? Good. Yes. Thank you so much, Ms. Gregory. Again, I apologize for the long wait. <laughs> Goodness, no. And I'm happy to be here. And, um, you know, as always, feel free to send me any questions, too. I'm happy to answer what I can. So. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent work, as always. Um, this is exciting. We're getting to the bottom and of the list. And hopefully, um, folks who are in need in the business community uh, and social service community can now turn toward the federal government for their assistance um, um, and that that we've provided a, a, a useful service uh, to fill the gap. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of other things to get done, like getting people vaccinated, but we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> so let's see if there's anyone else from um, any other department that has something they'd like to bring forward for our uh, work session. And I do not see any, ah, blessed be. Okay, we're at the bottom of our agenda. <laughs> um, thank you all for your patience. Um, and uh, so um, with that, um, our meeting is adjourned and uh, we've got storm water at three o'clock. See you then. <laughs> Take care, be well, get vaccinated. <laughs>